The following attack flow is similar to the one used in the Capital One breach, which started with an attacker taking advantage of a misconfiguration on the application layer. This allowed the attacker to do a server-side request forgery attack, which basically let the attacker tell the server to execute an HTTP request on their behalf. This vulnerability was used to query the metadata service on the EC2 to get the information they wanted. So they started with metadata, and they will go into IAM, and then go into security credentials, and finally they get to EC2 RDS role. This is the role that is attached to this EC2 instance. Once the attacker queries it, they are able to get the credentials. They have an access key and token. The attacker exports the tokens into their environment into a cred.sh file. They source that file, and at that point, they have the credentials of the asset and can assume the EC2 RDS role. As you can see, they do not have S3 permissions yet, so they will do something known as an enumeration technique to discover different role names within that account. This involves using dictionaries of most common role names that exist in the wild, known as enumerable role names. Attackers are able to easily check if those role names exist in your account. The attacker is testing out different common role names that have to do with full access for an S3. They will be going after as much access as possible. So far, they haven't been successful. Until now. There is no error on this last one that they guessed. They have now assumed the S3 full access rule from the EC2 RDS rule they originally stole the credentials of. They will do the same thing here, export the tokens and source it. Now they can steal the entire storage from this account. The attacker uses Tor to exfiltrate the data. They enable Tor on their machine, use LS to receive all the information, then the sync command to steal everything to their own account. The first alert for this investigation is successful API request originated from a Tor exit node, which is a huge red flag for any environment. Click inspect to investigate further. From this visualization, I can see the entire attack flow. It starts with a web server that was able to use the S3 full access role token to access the S3 bucket. If we click on the S3 full access token, we see in the timeline that it assumed the role. Now the purpose of accessing that S3 bucket and assuming the role was getting access to the sensitive data. And again, if we go into the timeline, we can see the actions that were taken. We see a list objects API call that the attacker used to understand what they could steal. And get objects API calls where the attacker actually exfiltrated the sensitive data. The next alert is abuse of unsuccessful assume role. This has to do with the enumeration technique shown in the attack segment, where the attacker guessed multiple different variations of the role name S3 full access until they managed to guess the right one and could assume the role of S3 full access. Looking at the logs to investigate further, we see four failed assume role API calls and one at the top that succeeded, which was for the S3 full access. Looking at the actual log information under event, the status will either say failure or success. The last alert we will touch on is abuse of access token generated by STS dedicated for EC2. Basically, this says that an STS token, which was supposed to be used just for the EC2, was used by an external IP. This is alarming and should be inspected further. We can see the web server here. Remember, that role for this web server was EC2 RDS. The attacker did an STS request from that role to move to the S3 full access role, whose token we see here. From there, they could access the S3 bucket and steal the sensitive data stored there. To learn more about Checkpoint Cloud Guard intelligence and threat hunting, visit the link below.